Hello, Jeff Darrington here, Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Greylog. In this demo, we're going to go through the new features that have come out in our new release, version 4.1. What we'll do is highlight these features, and we'll go through them really quickly, and then I'll break out the features in, this, in the actual demo. So we're going to look at a few features that I classify as search and dashboard type features. We're going to look at the new aggregation builder. We're going to look at log view. We're also going to look at widget focusing and what that does. We'll look at the new search time picker and you'll see that it's been enhanced quite substantially. And we'll look at the new export formats for JSON, NDJSON, and plain text format. We're also going to look at the new highlighting rule gradient options and the value actions on bar and pie charts. There are some new options now in the parameterized search options and you now have the ability to create static and drop down lists within those parameters. And we'll be looking at our heat map widget color scale. Next, we'll look at some new core features that we have, the new on-premise forwarder, as well as the Okta authentication and team synchronization. And we'll be looking at the user interface customization options. We'll look at some new data adapters. We have an LDAP AD user lookup data adapter, the Gray Noise Basic and Enhanced data adapter, and we have the ThreatFox IOC tracker data adapter. So from there, we'll break out into the Q&A, and let's get started. Okay, now let's get into search and flow through some of the new features that we have. And I'll bring you new into my screen here. We're going to start with the first thing, and that is the date time picker. So you'll notice in 4.1, when you select the time picker, you now have a fairly lengthy menu where you can go in and set your different parameters for your different time ranges for your logs, your absolute time if you want to get right down to dates and calendars and hours, minutes, and seconds. So for investigations, if you need to get right down to that really minute time frame, you can then select it in this window. And you can insert actual keywords into time frames and showing examples as last month or four hours ago, giving you sort of a verbal approach to how to actually look for your items within your time frames. We also have our drop down as usual, which is our our pre-canned or pre-configured time frames, so 5, 10, 15, 5, 15, 30 minutes, or whatever you're looking for. I'm going to start with 30 days because I want to start with a bit of data so we can start showing some of these features. So what I'm going to start with is just a source of Greylog 2. I've got some syslogs coming into Greylog, so you have a variety of logs to look at. What I'm going to look at in this is specifically the logging events for exporting. So if I wanted to take these raw events from a given individual item, I can actually now go here and export the actual raw data as a comma separated value or a JSON or plain text or ND JSON, which is a new line delimited JSON format. So this will allow you to download the data in multiple formats and utilize it for whatever needs you might have to import it into some other system or use it for an investigation. And what I'm going to do now is look at building out an aggregation. So what I want to look at for an aggregation is I'm just going to pick a few fields. In this case, I'm going to look at the facility number. So I'm going to go here and under aggregation, you're going to see it looks a little different now. The actual uh, aggregation is built to look directly with all of the fields. So I'm going to select facility number, and you can actively update this preview and get updates. And from here, add additional fields. So I'm going to add facility. And you can actually see in the window, it update in real time with an update and create the data table. Now, I can change this. The other thing you can do in the in the new aggregation builder is if you wanted to look at this data in a different order. So you'll see on the screen, the first column is facility number and then the facility name associated. You can actually grab this and you can actually move it around. So you now update it. And now that you have the data sorted and set up in such a way it's represented differently. So depending on what data you're looking for and how you want to represent it, you can reorder these groupings and get the data separately, differently, or arranged in the columns. So I'm going to do a count for this, and I'm going to select a field on facility number. And update the preview. 
And now you'll get the count. So we now have a chart and we can duplicate this chart really quickly. And I'm gonna change it slightly, modify it so that we have this particular data. We only wanna have the count of the facility. So I'm gonna delete this and have the count. See the count now show up. I'm gonna change it to a pie chart and update the preview. Okay, so I'm gonna apply these changes. And in this preview, we have a view of it in a text sort of data chart format versus a pie chart. And what we're gonna move into is adding a new widget that has just come out and it will represent this data differently from what you see on the screen. See at the bottom, we have our standard all messages fields. I'm gonna add a new, or a new, new aggregation called log view. When this comes on the screen, you are going to see, I'll stretch this out, you're going to see the raw message log coming out and in real time, this will update at the bottom of the log. So if I wanted to move this around and move it up to the top, you can shrink it so I can look at the last few lines if I want or whatever view we'd prefer. And this is very handy for environments where you might have specific logs you're watching and you may understand exactly what those log messages are. So you can grab one of the individual logs and you can actually change or add the specific fields into that. So if I wanted to know what the application name was for this log, I can highlight that and save it. And what will happen is that field will get added to the actual log view. So it allows you to get a very stripped down view, but a very detailed view of what the raw logs are. So the difference between the log view and the all messages is the all messages, when you click on a message, it ends up showing you the entire parsed file, which is for other means or other needs, where the log view is very handy in DevOps environments, in you know code spins, you're watching things go up and down. Um, it's really nice to have this as an option. The next thing I want to show you, which is handy, and sometimes you can create a dashboard where you have a ton of information and you might want to explore a dashboard and not want to change the layout of the dashboard and configuration affecting all users. So what you can do in this new feature called the individual uh, highlight, uh, the focusing widget is on the right hand side, you're going to see here an expansion window. So what you do is when you click this, it will turn it to full screen and let you look at what's in that log and you can return it back. This does not affect the actual configuration of the dashboard or the search. It just allows you to magnify on that particular item. So if this count aggregation I did on the pie chart, I wanted to see it full screen. You can click that and have a view at that data without affecting the configuration of the dashboard and you can bring it back. So it's another great way of looking at your data minimizing your widgets or your dashboards, and then expanding them without making modifications back and forth to your dashboards. Now that we've built out this data a little bit, what I'm gonna show you is some of the new features we added to our heat map widget or heat map chart. So I'm gonna duplicate this particular one so we can see it represented in another widget. And I'm gonna drag it down here and I'm gonna modify it. And add the, the parameters that are required for a heat map and right now we're only representing one portion of data so I'm going to add the facility number and the facility number will be the column and the facility will be the row so you'll have the facility number tied to the actual uh, facility name or whatever's happening in the logs and then once we get down here and we'll change it to heat map We'll do a quick update and the default update will show you the Virtus uh, color scale. And you can change your reverse scale here by selecting this option and change the preview if you want to invert the colors. If you want to change your heat map and match it up to potentially some other color schemes you might have, or you want them to show up in a type of dashboard that's got a little bit more pop or a little bit more um, organization for the type of needs you might have. I might want to show the this particular one color scale or palette called hot. And this hot one is, is very red in color and might be used for dashboards that have real severe type alerting so that you're made aware of what that dashboard's for. 
There's a whole bunch of other color scales that are in here that you can use. There's grays, greens, all kinds of different things. I would offer you to try them out. I'll leave this one as this for now. And what I'm going to do now that we have this data in here, I want to look at how we changed and added features to parameterized dashboards or parameterized search. So I'm going to add the facility as a parameter. And in the facility, I'm going to keep the same name as a facility. And when you hit enter, it will pop a window to declare this. So I'm going to declare it. And what I want to show you is in the generic, you can put a default value in here. But with the drop down, you have the ability now to select static values or values of a field. The static values will be fields you only want to pick that will show up in that field. But if I wanted to use values of a field and specify the field name, we're utilizing facility and it will return by default the limit of 20 of the items that will be in the drop down. So depending on what you're using, if you only had five, you can change it to five, whatever you like. So if I submit this, now at the top, we have a value that we're going to show is for all with a wildcard. If you wanted to select a particular value, let's look at kernel. This will update the search with just what's in kernel. Or if you move on down the line, if you wanted to know syslog daemon, it will show you just those logs. So there's many scenarios where you might need to drill down very quickly into certain types of logs. And when you have a parameter set up and you know what options are made available, this parameter option can be very handy for investigations or other kinds of things with you know, FTP servers where you're pushing files up and back. You can look what was upload downloaded. If you want to look at a particular field, the user underscore name field, which is the actual user credential, you could have a drop down here where you could actually see all activity by user. And instead of creating the queries and searches for it, you could actually just have the drop down and the entire dashboard or search is now going to represent you for that individual data. And if you needed to, you can export it and do whatever you want at that time. So it's a very handy feature to have highlighted in the new options for the parameters. The next feature I'd like to show you is an option we have under enterprise and customization. In enterprise customization, we now have the ability to modify the global themes across Greylog in the UI. So we added an option a few versions back for dark mode, which you'll notice was here, and you can change your dark mode options. What you can also do is in your color scheme, modify the global theme so that you'll have themes showing up with different types of colors or backgrounds. You might have some UIs that are built in your department or in your area specific around your company branding or logoing, and you want to make things look very similar. You can do this in here by changing the different individual colors and backgrounds and revert back to the north, the original uh, field values or the color values. There's also a feature in a header badge where you can set up a, uh, a new header and this test header and you pick a color. I'm going to pick a lighter color and update the badge. You can put this in if you wanted to have, for example, um, something specific in your cluster that was a live cluster or a dev cluster or you know, you might have multiple instances of Greylog for different feature sets and you might want to label them so that way when you log in, you see the actual branding that's showed up in the top corner. Uh, you may not want it at all and you can save that as well. And there's an actual public notifications area now. So when you create a public notification, what this does is it creates a banner on the main page of the Greylog login. So I'm just going to put test and what I'll show you, this is just a test. So if you had maintenance windows or you had different activity going on, you need to communicate to everyone that's in Greylog. You can build this out and call it a informative and save it. And when you log in now, you'll see this banner showing up at the primary screen. So this could be a valued message that you want to send to the team. You know, upgrades are being done tonight or whatever you want to, whatever you want to use this for. Uh, could be, you know, an alert message sent up to the team. Hey, we have this mo message notification you need to understand. So you can go back in here and under customization, you can remove it, delete it. And inside it as well, if you edit it, you can send... Um, 
behavior around it for visible at login, visible globally, or dismissible where people can clean it off their screen if they don't want to see it anymore. So it's a really nice option for sending all those users a gray log in certain environments and SOC environments and uh, operation centers where you can have that information provided to the team. Okay, next, let's get into a few new features that we've got, and we're going to look at forwarders. So in the documentation, I'd like to cover this off. We have a new product offering called Graylog Forwarder, and the forwarder is a dedicated application. And this application is loaded on a Linux-based host with Docker or with Debian packages or your packagers. And what it allows you to do is ingest all of your logs into the forwarder where some of the logs might not be encrypted. They could be plain text format. And then they are encrypted and they are compressed and sent to either one of two locations, your primary cluster on site, a premise-based cluster, or they're sent to the Greylog managed cloud. So if you wanted to go to Greylog cloud, this is what you would require on your site. You would require a forwarder, and this would be used to send logs to your cloud instance that Greylog would manage. So depending on your instances, if you have five or six sites or more, you would be then installing these forwarders on these different sites and pointing them to the cloud. The next thing we're gonna look at is some of the new features we added, and it is the data adapter for the Active Directory user lookup. So under lookup tables and data adapters, you're gonna find a new adapter type, and that new adapter type is user lookup. And you'll configure your connection to your LDAP server, and this will permit you to build lookups for users in your lookup tables to validate whether they're in Active Directory or depending on what you're doing with the client, whether they're active or in security groups, there's a variety of things you can do here. The other thing we have added is an authentication option. Instead of just LDAP or Active Directory, we now have Okta. So setting up the Okta instance, this allows you to now use an additional service outside of Active Directory or use Okta for your two-factor authentication or other things that you might be doing in your current existing environment and you want to interwork Graylog in. We have some new features and the additional features we've added around this as well is adding some threat capabilities. So we have added the threat fox ability to go out and check APIs through an API for the IOC values and confidence level of given IOCs. And this allows you to look up these IOCs in the cloud. And ThreatFox is a open source endpoint that allows you to garner information from them. The other thing we've added is an adapter for the gray noise application. And the gray noise fields are setting up what is real in your data and all your information, and Gray Noise provides a great in-depth knowledge of information and what's good and what's bad. So check them out, and that's another option we have in our features list. And that covers off our new features in version 4.1 of Greylock. And let's get started on the Q&A.